Th thank you, Alex, and thank you, Suzanne. That was um, excellent. So we have had a few more questions, which you can see in the um, question section. Um, <clears throat> I'll just read out a couple, if that's OK. Um, so it was a question about how sensitive are the results of the simulation study to the assumption of one-to-one -one randomization in each group. So this, this is a question from Joe. I don't know, Suzanne, would you like to answer that? Um, yeah, so the, the the short answer is that I don't know. So in this simulation study, we only looked at um, a sort of one-to-one -one randomization of um, patients in the trials. So we didn't actually consider what might happen if we had this sort of unequal allocation ratio. Um, so, yeah, the answer really is that I don't know at the moment and without running more simulations. Yeah. Okay, and um, Chris, Kate asked, does the same argument apply to um, relative risk of, of binary outcomes where the standard error is related to event rates on control? Do you want to take that, Suzanne, or do you want to take it? I think you can take that one, Alex. Y yeah, it, Chris, you, you, you're absolutely right that what's, what, what was particularly mind numbingly daft from me was that we have seen this before exactly in odds ratios and relative risks also have the same induced correlation and as the effect size of odds ratio gets larger this correlation gets bigger uh, and, and essentially this is a little bit of an analog to that and that was one of the points that a very polite and patient reviewer pointed out with us and, and our work improved as a result of that kind of light bulb moment uh, that I really, given how much work I did in the area originally, I really should have, should have picked up on myself. Um, so yeah, the short answer is yes, it's, it's a similar phenomenon and you know, it looks as though it, it could be um, you know, at least as strong here, if not, not more important. Okay, um, a non-statistical question. There is some evidence now that morphine is not a good analog is it possible that changes in intake are more to do with maximizing bad effects than with maximizing good effects? So that's a question from David. I'll jump in, Suzanne, unless you yeah. better I haven't got a great answer. Uh, no, that, no, that, no. That, <laughs> sorry. I think I think that's one for Brett, really. I mean, we're neither of us are clinical experts in this area. Uh, he is um, so I, I don't even want to hazard to answer that. I'm really sorry. Um, if you send the question to me or if you get our paper, um, we, then you know, do send an email to Brett. He's very active and very keen to talk about this work. So you, I'm sure you would get a good answer from him. Alex, if you uh, skip ahead two slides, there's a final slide which has the link to the paper uh, on it. Um, uh, great. Then, um, um, if anyone wants to find the paper, there's a lot more detail than what we've sort of covered in the um, the talk today, as well as sort of Brett's contact details. Um, or you can sort of contact Brett through me or Alex for sort of more clinically related questions. Great, thank you, Susan. Great, thanks, Susan. Yeah.